I'm going to show you how to render. The reason why we'd render a house would be purely aesthetic reasons. Modernise those old 70s bricks into a nice new modern look. The tools we'll need are a trowel, a float, a hawk, a sponge for the finish, a water brush, a mixing bucket, our drill, our product, a straight edge and a broom for cleaning down the surface that we're going to work on. Preparation before render is to clean the wall. We just need it to be dust free, grease free and we'll use a stiff bristled broom to achieve that. Now that we've prepped and cleaned the wall, we'll mix our product. Okay, to do this, we'll add the product to some water. Just follow the instructions on the bag. I'll be using the mixing drill to mix the product and try to get a toothpaste consistency. Now that I'm happy with the consistency of my render, just wash off your drill. Now we're ready to render. I'm going to apply the render with a hawk and trowel and I'm going to try to get it as flat and smooth as possible. Depending on what brick you're rendering on, you may need to wet it. I'm rendering on a rather smooth brick, so I won't need to wet these ones. The technique I use to apply the render to the wall is by tilting the hawk onto the trowel and then applying the render at a 45 degree angle. You can use an alternate method by placing the hawk on the wall and applying like so. We're rendering a 50s house and you may encounter some vents. If so, just render up to the vent with a slight overlay around the edges and once dry, we'll cut away with our small tool to give a nice clean finish. This is generally a one coat process and we try to apply the render at four to six mils thick. Now that we've applied our render, we'll need to let it dry till it's firm to touch and we can then move on to our next step, which will be screeding. Now that we've waited 30 minutes and the render's firm to touch, We'll use a straight edge to flatten out the render. Now that we've screeded the wall, we need to fill in the hollows with render. You'll be able to see the hollows in the render by the lighter colour. It's important to fill these so we can maintain a flat surface. Now that we've filled in our hollows, we'll screed off one more time to maintain a flat surface. Now that we've screeded the wall, we need to float it. This will help fill in any small hollows and close the surface. You may need to add a bit of water to the surface depending on how dry it is. Now that we've floated the wall, we're going to sponge it. Sponging gives a nice smooth finish. Just make sure that your sponge is damp to start with, not too wet. If you find your sponge finish is coming up a little bit scratchy, rinse out your sponge again and go over it one more time. Now that the sponging's done and looking nice and smooth and flat, we can now cut around our vent. I'm going to use my float as a guide. We'll locate the edge of the vent and using a small tool, we'll cut gently around the vent edge. And finally, after cutting around the vent, just sponge any marks off with a nice damp sponge. And that is how you render a wall.